Hopefully. Um, thank you everyone for coming. <laughs> um, so uh, it's my pleasure uh, to be here to talk about uh, this tutorial. Um, so the title of this tutorial is Imaging Through Atmospheric Turbulence. Um, uh, uh, here we have myself, I'm Stanley Chen, I'm from Purdue University, and we also have uh, Nick, he's also from Purdue University. Um, so to just get started, um, I want to uh, let you know where you can find the uh, tutorial material. So if you uh, search my name, uh, Stanley Chan uh, from Google, um, then you should be able to see uh, the, the lab website. So you go there um, and on the left-hand side, you'll be able to see uh, a tab called the Imaging Through Turbulence. That's our project. So click there. Um, and then you can see right in the main page uh, of the tutorial. Um, then you should be able to see uh, a couple of things. Number one, it will be the lecture slides. Uh, so that, uh, we have four parts um, and you can see them. Uh, you can download those uh, PDFs. Um, there is also a uh, GitHub uh, link where uh, Nick and I just put up uh, yesterday. Um, there you can see Python demonstrations. Okay, so I, thought, I hope those materials are readily available. Uh, if you have any difficulty of accessing the lecture material, let me know. I'll be very happy to, to help you out. Okay, so uh, who are we? Uh, to be honest, this is our first time coming to CVPR. So we are very new. And I know some of you are also new here. Uh, so thank you very much for joining. Uh, for people who are on, on Zoom, thank you very much for joining us virtually as well. Uh, we're Purdue University. Um, uh, in case you don't know where we are, we are in the state of Indiana in the United States. Uh, um, so if you look at um, uh, this map, uh, we are sort of in the middle of the, uh, the United States. We are two hours from Chicago. Um, so I have been at Purdue for, um, this is my ninth year. It's going to be my ninth year. Um, and Nick is a, uh, he's going to be a sixth year uh, PhD student at Purdue. Um, we are a public university, in case you don't know. Uh, the, na the name seems like a private school, but it's actually a, a public land grant school. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, uh, what is turbulence? Uh, why are we here? What are we doing? Um, why do we want to put up a three hour tutorial to talk about uh, this thing? Um, well, turbulence is actually a a very common phenomenon, a physical phenomenon, an optical phenomenon uh, that you would normally see uh, as you are looking at things that are very far away. Two examples are good to know. One is uh, imaging uh, at a star. So that is for astronomical imaging. So you are pointing your camera up and you're shooting through the layers and layers of turbulence. And we know that the atmosphere has different refractive index as you go up. Uh, and so the, the turbulence will change. The other scenario that we normally uh, see is uh, imaging through a long distance horizontally. That is, uh, you go to a hot area and you put up your camera, you have a telescope, you look at the car that is um, a kilometer, two kilometers away, then you will be able to see that kind of turbulence effect. Um, for this tutorial, we are mainly interested in looking at things that are horizontal, okay? Uh, something that we don't need to buy a expensive telescope camera looking at stars. Um, another reason is that uh, um, uh, when you shoot things uh, horizontally, the turbulent effects, uh, uh, the, the, the turbulent strength, what we call the CN square profile is typically a constant. So that would make the things a little bit easier. Uh, horizontal imaging also have a lot of applications uh, in surveillance, navigations, uh, things that you can name, uh, compared to uh, vertical imaging that is more for satellite, for space missions. Um, so is turbulence really just um, the consequence of hot? Um, of course not. Uh, turbulence is the consequence of both hot and distance. Now, there are other factors um, that are uh, influencing turbulence. 
including the altitude and then how tall or how uh, how high is where you put a camera putting a camera on a mountain versus putting a camera on the ground uh, we have a difference uh, how humid uh, is the weather so in new orleans today here it would be a lot uh, more humid than in uh, for example in desert right um, wind speed that's going to change the the temporal um, um, variation of the turbulence um, pollution fog those are additional factors that you want to consider so we're not gonna, we're going to talk about all these um, a very brief history of the subject um, turbulence uh, is really a physics um, problem that uh, is gradually becoming a uh, important subject in computer vision and image processing because we are finding more and more need to resolve uh, the images. Uh, the historically speaking, uh, imaging through turbulence starts with uh, the groundwork of uh, Kumogorov. Um, so, if you if you hear uh, the work of Kumogorov, you 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 probably associate his work with probability. Okay, so he's the is the author of the, uh, uh, um, the axioms of probabilities. And uh, he's also known for the, uh, the groundwork on turbulence. Um, so, so that's the starting point of the turbulence. Um, and um, throughout this so many years, uh, we have seen a lot of developments. Uh, um, Born and Wolf, uh, we have book um, by Tatarsky on imaging through turbulence. Um, then uh, around the, uh, Late 60s, Fourier optics is uh, printed. Uh, so now we have much better understanding of the, of the signal processing perspective of, of the optics. Um, then we have statistical optics. Um, then it came the imaging through turbulence uh, books and simulations and so on. Um, there's, a, there's a period of time that I call it the golden period of time uh, where there are a lot, a lot of papers that are published in, in, uh, in the Optical Society of America. Um, mainly driven by David Fried and other colleagues uh, in the field. Um, they put a lot of lots of efforts in defining what turbulence is, how our images are formed, what are long exposure, short exposures, how do you recover those, how much you can do, uh, a lot of groundwork over there. Um, as of today, the, the field has been involved quite a bit. Uh, we have seen a lot of uh, image restoration methods, uh, deep learning methods. So how are those methods are gonna play in this big, big, big uh, history, uh, I think that is our goal to really uh, give a perspective uh, from our end. So uh, the uh, uh, presentation will look like this. Uh, we will um, uh, have three parts. Uh, part one, we will uh, uh, talk about wave optics, wave propagation, uh, some Fourier optics, um, and then we will have a break. Then after the break, uh, we will talk about turbulence, some physics, uh, imaging, how, how images are formed uh, as you see through the turbulence. Uh, then part three, we will talk about uh, image restoration uh, methods. Uh, how do we recover uh, turbulence? Okay, so uh, what, do, what do you expect to learn in uh, this tutorial? A couple of things. Uh, of course, in three hour, um, we cannot teach you um, everything because that's just too much material. What we want to really do is to provide you some intuitions, um, some physics intuitions, um, especially how images are formed. Uh, what, what do we mean by turbulence? Uh, is it just um, uh, shifting the pixels a little bit and then add some blur? Uh, are there other um, more principled way of uh, doing that? Um, we also have some um, uh, thoughts about uh, implementation. Um, if you go to the uh, the, uh, the website, uh, go to the um, this tutorials website, you'll be able to see the, the Python code. So we probably don't have time to go through the code with you, but I think uh, uh, we will talk about the, the main concepts and then uh, you guys can go home and then uh, download the code and try it. Um, uh, and after the talk, um, I hope we can give you some pointers to where to look for additional materials. Uh, because uh, if you're new to this field, um, after three hours, it's, it's kind of difficult to, to say you really know the material, right? So, so I think it's our job to, to uh, show you where you can uh, follow up, right? Uh, so where you can find the additional materials. Um, some acknowledgement before we go into the technical contents. Uh, I want to give thanks to Nick, uh, 
who will be presenting here, and also two other students, uh, Juan and Xing Guang, they're not here today. Um, uh, this project, uh, we started quite a while. Uh, I think we started in 2016, 17 or so. Uh, we have uh, received uh, quite a bit of funding from several um, funding sources. Um, uh, at this stage, uh, this project is mainly funded by National Science Foundation and also IRPAR, uh, where we are uh, working on um, um, different um, downstream tasks. Okay. Okay. So with that, um, I will pass the time to Nick, and then he will uh, they will talk about the uh, the optics, uh, and then we will have a break. Okay. So I will stop sharing screen. <laughs> 